Welcome to another video guys. In today's video, I'm gonna be changing out the brake pads and rotors and wheel bearings on this 2014 Ford Fiesta. So stay tuned. So this is what we have here today, uh, brake rotors, brake pads, and wheel bearings for the front. Uh, wheel bearings, you can get them in a kit that has the uh, outer hub um, that you have to still press in, but you know, normally you don't need to replace all that, so I just got the bearing, and then just rotors and pads and some in there. So um, basic tools you'll need, but the main thing that we're gonna need today is to use the shop press. So. Um, if you don't have a shop press, you can go to some of the shops around your town and they may push that bearing in for you, but they charge anywhere from, I don't know, maybe 20 to $40 to press it in. And just keep in mind that um, that would be if you take off like your spindle, take it to them with the bearing. So all they have to do is pretty much press the old one in, push the new one out. You know, it's not $20 and they're going to take it all apart and do that for you. But um let's go ahead and get started first thing i'm gonna jack up the front of the car put jack stands in there and get it all secured So I went ahead and jacked up the car, uh, put a jack stance underneath here, make sure that it is secured. You're gonna be working not really underneath, but you know, you don't want it to fall on you. So took the wheels off. Uh, be careful with these lug nuts. You know, Ford uses this a lot where they have that little skinny kind of plate on top of them. So the right size sock, if it's under really snug, you have to kind of guide it in there. But if you use the next size up, it's gonna to be too loose and it's just gonna strip this out. So be careful while I'm pulling these out. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the brake caliper off now, bracket, and the rotor off, and then we have to pretty much take the spindle out of the uh, vehicle here so we can press the bearing. We also need to take this big nut, which is a 32 millimeter, so we can slide the CV shaft out of there when we pull out the spindle. So. All right, so to get started, uh, we're gonna loosen the spindle nut here first. This is a 32 millimeter. Now once we loosen everything, we're gonna push the CV axle all the way out. Um, you have to loosen the tie rod in here. And this is uh, 18 millimeter. If you have an impact, it makes everything a lot easier. Now I don't have the special tool to push this out, so I like to hit it just on the actual knuckle. I don't like to hit the top so I don't mess up the thread, so. You hit it a few times, then it's just gonna drop uh, pretty much by itself, and then you just finish taking off this nut here. But don't hit it on top because you mess up the threads on it. Uh, if necessary, I mean, you can push, loosen the nut to it's almost like flush and try to hit it there, but just hit the actual knuckle itself. So uh, we're gonna take the brake caliper off. Now this one, I'm just gonna, I'm also gonna take this little bolt off here for the hose. 
just to get it out of the way. Now, if you're not gonna put new pads, you could just take off the bolts here for the caliper bracket. Since I'm doing new pads uh, at this time, I'm gonna take it off first here. Because I'm gonna take it apart to put the pads anyway, so it's easier to do this part here while everything's attached and separate. But if you're not doing brakes, then just do the whole thing as one. So put these aside. Take the caliper off. Use a wire or something to let it hang. Then now we take the actual caliper bracket bolt off. And I think these are 15, yep. these aside as well now at this point your rotor should come off uh, if they're rusted under put a bolt right in these threads to push it off the hub or give it a good beating with the hammer whichever you prefer um, there's a knot here for that uh, ball joint, so we have to loosen this one, so 15 as well. And then we're gonna take both of these off to take the knuckle off of the uh, strut. bolts in here for now uh, you want to do the bolt here for the APS sensor eight millimeter now again if you live in a part where there's a lot of rust um, you might not be able to take off the ABS sensor off the little hole there like this so if that's the case then you would want to unplug it follow the cable behind here and then uh, you know bring that out with the spindle um, you got to be careful when you're taking off the bearing though not to damage it uh, while you're here you can inspect see like I see this boot is damaged here um, so we might do some struts later on we'll see so at this point, we can go ahead and take these bolts off. And then the jack stands, I put them on the frame, not on this um, control arm, because you're gonna wanna be able to move it up and down a little bit. So keep that in mind. And then you're gonna kind of lightly tap the CV axle just to get it off of the uh, of the hub and this can just pretty much stay aside here
normally this bolt here is just pushed in there, but I just turned it that way, it loosens up. And just lightly tap it out of the way. Um, you know, turn it that way, it gets loose, and then tap it out. And this is the little bit harder part to get the uh, ball joint off of the spindle here. So I'm going to get a little bit of WD-40 just to kind of let it soak slightly in there. And then I have this little uh, punch. I'm just going to Now you don't want to drive this too much. I mean, you don't want to force this to break or anything. I just push it in there a little bit to open up the spindle. And then you'd want to you can hit this with like a hammer and a long chisel. Um, I'm going to use the impact here. Keeping this in here really helps to kind of Get the metal kind of expanded a little bit, but um, you have to hit it with a hammer. It can be done. It's just going to be a lot harder than. It's in that impact hammer, but either way, um, once you take it off, this is how you be. Uh, remember, if you're Unplug the sensor that you're going to have the sensor together with it. So um, now we're going to take try to take the uh, hub here off. So we're going to hit it here from the back. Let me get to my press. Now, obviously, um, I don't have too many like adapters. I use my wheel bearing race installers. Um, this came with the press, so that's what I have. Uh, Ideally, you want to push the center part here so only this hub comes out. Uh, most of the time, the bearing breaks in half, and half of the bearing is going to stay on the hub, so then you have to cut it off. Uh, so, for now, I'm just going to put this here with the socket that fits right in the middle, and then I'm just going to hit it with a heavy hammer. This may take a few times, but it's going to come off. Watch your toes when you do that, because obviously it's going to drop up. See how this uh, came off? with the race attached on it. So I'll take my grinder and cut a few relief cuts in here. That way it loosens up. Um, if you have a, like a propane torch, you can, you can heat it up and once it expands, it comes off. Um, I don't have one, so I'll have to cut it off, but we'll do that here in a moment. So here's your bearing. Um, there's a little snap ring in here, so we have to pull this off. That way the bearing 
push this out from the back um, so it comes out through the front here. So I'll move you guys here. And uh, same thing here. I don't have the special pliers to take this bearing off, so put some safety glasses on in case it jumps out your face. So what I'm trying to do is squeeze it and then pull one side off like I did here. And then once you have one side off, you can just gently kind of start prying it off. So um, I'm holding it with the vice grips here. That way it doesn't, or to try to get it to not jump on my face or somewhere where I'm not going to find it or something, so. You just take your time. Do it slowly. And eventually it's going to come off. Now, um, when I ordered the bearings, I'm pretty sure there was a kit that came with the bearing. Um, it came with the new hub and the new snap ring. And so, you know, if you're, even if you have a press, um, if I did it again, I think I would just order the one with that hub so I don't have to mess with it, but that's what I got, so. Um, now let's push that bearing out. And so the main thing here is going to be to... We want those plates to be only here on the outside, not covering the center. Because when you're pushing that bearing out, you want it to go through. You don't want it to be stuck on those. Now you can always stop and move on, but... If you can line them up where they're, they're only hitting the outside of that lip, then you don't have to stop and do it again. So keep that in mind, and then you want to have it lined up. And I'm just going to get something that's going to be pretty close on the size there. And I'm just going to use these as spacers. So my press, I can move it up and down. and. Kind of adjust it, but I had to move it lower when I was putting the bearing in, so I'm just gonna put those little spacers there. But you can always move it around. And I'll say the main thing with this is just making sure it's kind of straight, you know, um, if anything is kind of not straight, it's going to try to push out. So when you're pushing, putting force on it, things are going to want to 
see there how it kind of moved out. So that's the main thing there too. Just go slowly. Uh, you see something kind of moving awkward, stop. Because that's going to jump at you pretty hard. Probably hit you right where it hurts. So. And you can see where it's going to start to move down. The first time it kind of moves it might you know pop or anything but just be careful and I'm just gonna put you know that there to once it goes through So here's that bearing. There's your spindle. Now, we were pushing it out this way. Keep in mind, let me show you on the new bearing. I don't know if you can see it easily, but um, this side of the bearing, it's kind of brown like plastic, this piece here. This side is metal. And so this side is going to go in on the inside where that uh, ABS sensor is. This is where the little ring is that's going to read. If you put this bearing the other way around, that ABS is not going to read anything. You're going to have an ABS light. It might mess with the way your vehicle drives. So keep that in mind. Put this on the right side. And then I'm just going to spray some brake cleaner. Clean this off here a little bit. Um, it's not that bad. And I'm going to go outside with my grinder and cut some reliefs on this race. I'll be right back and show you what I did. All right. So... I cut with the grinder some relief cuts, you know, sideways, obviously, if you go this way, you can't get to the edge, but I try to get to the edge as much as I can, so I did one, two, three, four, and then I used this uh, kind of flat chisel and just hit it right, you know, in one of those grooves, so um, I'm going to go ahead and clean up this a little bit with brake cleaner, and then we'll put it all back together. All right, so now we're going to push the bearing in. This is the back. Now we have to support this flat, so I'm gonna use one of these bearing seals um, drivers, so that way it's flat. Um, I'm actually gonna use two of them. two of them and then I'm gonna put the spindle here so just make sure that when you're doing this the only thing touching is gonna be you know this part here because you want it to be flat you put a crooked uh, one I don't think really the bearing would go in but two um, if it does go in it's not gonna go in there right so um, and then just remember 
Um, this plastic piece for the uh, sensor goes on the back towards the sensor, so make sure you go down the right way. And just to make it a little easier to go in there, I'm just going to put a little bit of WD-40 in there. Just to help it go in there. Now the best, you know, um, I have like a, one of these to push it, but usually the best thing to use is your old bearing because that's the exact same size. And that way when it sinks, sinks in a little bit, it's gonna go in, but it's not gonna start grabbing really right away. So use your old bearing. Also, you want to make sure that you're pushing on the outside of the bearing where it's sliding in. If you push on the middle, you're going to break that bearing apart. So you want to make sure that you're pushing on the outer sleeve of that bearing. And as you can see, once you can go by hand just slightly and then it's going to start getting a little bit harder. That's because it's actually going in there. Um, my top bearing is just a little bit misaligned here, so I'm gonna back it up. Just because when it pushes in, I want it to push all the way in, so. By the way, this is a Harbor Freight top press that I had probably for like eight years, so but I don't use it much, so it, it works well. So remember, the bearing's gonna go in probably about a quarter of an inch past the top. And you can tell, like right there, it's all the way bottom out. You can tell where it's not really gonna go in anymore, so, you know, don't try to sit there and crank it more than you have to. And you can see that's in there. And I can see my groove for that snap ring. 